Hi, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now I promised some mini quilts, so I've got a new one for you. And it's featuring a little Aussie bird. It's a little fairy wren. It's called the Superb Blue Wren, one of my absolute favourites. I see them quite often here in Oz at, when I'm out walking. Um, so I thought you'd enjoy this one with a little teacup. Great for a sewing room or great to give as a gift for sure. So I've got the pattern all ready for you. All you need to do is click on that link that's in the description below. I'll also put it number one in the comments so it's easier for everybody to find. When you go to print your pattern templates out, make sure that you set your printer to printed actual size because sometimes printers resize themselves. So if you set it in your settings at actual size, your pattern pieces will be absolutely spot on. So what are we waiting for? Let's get busy making our little quilt. So let's have a little look at what we're going to need to make our little teacup mini quilt. So all of your measurements are in with your pattern templates. So we start with a top front panel and I'm just using a just a plain fabric. I've got that one interfaced with my fusible medium weight woven interfacing. Um, I do find these little mini quilts um, hold together better if they, do, if they are interfaced. And then you'll also need your little base piece. And that one also is interfaced and that needs to be a print that gives us an indication of a little tabletop, um, something that coordinates with the rest of your project. You're also going to need to cut strips of just fabric, no interfacing on these. And these are random strips which are quite pale in colour. We don't want them to interfere with the rest of our picture, but we do need some colour there. So I've gone for some light pastels in a few different tones there, and I've cut those strips to be just a little longer than our top panel. And we're going, going to be doing a quilt as you go method that I've used before. And they measure around about between two and three centimetres each. I've mixed it up a little so that we can alternate them through. And they're going to be popped onto there. And then we're going to need our, just move those out the way, we're going to need our side and top strips. And your measurements for those are also in your template and your description there. So we're going to have a nice border on that quilt. I'm going to go for the brown because I'm going to keep it all a bit natural. And I really want this to look like a real little art quilt. Uh, so that it looks more like a little painting when it's done. So that will look like it's a nice little frame. I'm not going to be uh, mitering and putting a proper quilt binding on this little quilt. If you're a quilter, of course, you can go ahead and do that. You know how to do that. R my reason for not doing that, I'm just trying to sh just show a really quick way to put a little wall hanging together. Um, but definitely go ahead and do those mitered cornered uh, bindings if you if you wish. So from there we're going to need for your basic construction we're going to need a little bit of cotton fine cotton wadding and I've turned mine into fusible by adding some heat and bond on the back you may be able to find a fusible variety. I've got cut that to a large size ready to cut to fit when our front is assembled. Similarly you also need a back for our little mini quilt and I have that one already interfaced with the same brown that I've got for the side panels. Now our next step is we need all of our little pieces for our teacup. So this is where you get to have a whole lot of fun in choosing what your little teacup's going to be. There's so many prints out there. I'm sure you can have a whole lot of fun with that. So we have our little saucer piece that sits on first. We then have our main cup piece. Now when you cut this one, I like to have, I like to cut it in an off-white. You may choose a different colour depending on what you're doing, but it gives us the handle free that's white, the top of the cup, inside of the cup that's white, and just the little base that's white. So, and that makes it stand out from the rest of the barrel of the cup, which is my print. So you can see how that will work there. This is a little lip of the saucer that will sit over. So I've matched that up to that print there and that will sit under there. We've also got our little piece that denotes our tea. 
Um, now you can also, if you drink your tea black or the person you're making, for, making it for, you, you can even you know, um, line it up with their preferences. You can make it with a little colour that looks like black tea. That one will just tuck in there. Make sure when you're cutting these pieces out, if I've put a little tea at the top, it means that's the top of uh, that piece. Do put them on there so that you know which way they go up. So that little T will sit in there, which makes it all that little bit more realistic. We are going to be adding, if you wish, we're going to be adding a little tag for a little T bag. We're going to be stitching a little string line down there. And I like to add just a little bit of text on there. I'm going to pop that on there, which is just the word joy. A little cup of joy there. And if you are wondering how to do the little text, little words, this is just a little tip. This is how I do it. It's not washable, um, but it's great for these sorts of projects. So this is heat and bond on the back of what is just a homespun. And I've pressed that on and I've made sure it's really, really firmly adhered. And then I have cut it to exactly the size of an A4 sheet. I've taken it back, I've repressed all of those corners, ready for printing. So you can go to your computer and create a file that has lots of words on it. Make sure you leave space in between each of those words. Fill up the whole page and then you can print that on, print that out on most of your home printers will do that. Put it on a dark black because it always comes out a little lighter and you'll find you've got beautiful words there. If you give them a press straight away afterwards, that really seals that, uh, that ink in as well and tends to um, cure it. So I do that and I have a whole sheet that's got lots of different random words and it's very easy to do and it does work really well. The, the best part is that when you go to cut out your little word, it's already got the heat and bond on the back. So you just peel it off and add it to your little project. Similarly, you may want to add some words up here. You might have a favourite little uh, tea saying um, or coffee time saying that you might want to put up there, um, which will look really sweet as well. So our next step is our little bird. Now, our little bird is cut with some very fine pieces. Now, an assortment of pieces here. And they all are backed with heat and bond as are all of your teacup pieces. Now we start with the little body. So there's a little process to putting this one together and I will walk you through it. So your first base, remember that these colors are going to be underneath here. So we will be able to see that. Now I started with, this is a, a superb blue wren, it's an Australian bird. Um, and they have a very beigey, plain sort of uh, barrel of their body section. So that's your first piece that gets cut out. And I've kept it as simple as I can for you. Your second piece is a purpley kind of a, a deep cobalt sort of blue. You can use fabric if you like. I'm using felt because I have the right colors in felt. So that's my second piece. My next piece, is black and I've gone for black felt which fits in with the top of the head there. They have very distinct markings which I have uh, followed here. Then we have our little top crown of the head and that is in that really splendid blue. We then have our little cheek which sits underneath and our little little tiny piece at the back there our wing tucks underneath there you can see that all fits in well we have blue on the tail the whole tail and then we add another piece that gives us that little extra sort of purpley violet there and we need a tiny tiny little button for the eye now we're going to be doing some stitching on this little bird that will really bring it to life. And we are going to be stitching in the little legs that will perch nicely on the edge of that cup just with a, with a brown thread. So 
once this is all done it's really going to pop I'm going to show you a few different techniques you can do some on the machine some by hand do it all on the machine whatever you like and the same with this I'm going to be doing some on the machine and some by hand it's totally up to you so with your colors your main thing to remember is don't have anything in your background that's too overpowering so keep it all nice and pastel but as far as your cup I like to reflect the blue bring the blue into it with this base um, but as far as your colors go you, you could go quite ornate you could go really posh um, with your colors with some lovely um, foil printed ones as well um, part of the dust of the upper crust fetch us a cup of tea so you could really make it quite glamorous um, as I said I've gone for my classic pinks that I like um, and I think that represents really well so our first step is going to be to prepare our background so we're going to move all of these out the way and our little bird and start with our top of our front panel and what we're going to be doing is starting off with one of our strips just about working out your layout and we're going to be popping our first one lining it up there you can see that they just extend a little and that's fine because we're going to trim that off when we're done so it really is just a matter of alternating those strips in lengths and widths in sorry in widths and colors and so I'm going to line up that first one and I'm just going to stitch with my four millimeter four millimeter seam allowance along here then I'm going to fold and press that one over and then I'm going to add my next piece in the same way I'm going to stitch that four millimeter seam allowance and fold and press it over I do press it over every single time and keep varying your widths as you go until you've got a lovely little covered top panel and then we will trim those off so you can go ahead work out the arrangement that you like and get those set into place so there you can see my completed top part of my front panel and I've got that pressed out nice and flat because remember we're going to be pressing uh, other pieces onto that so we really press it back and front so it's nice and nice and ready for those pieces so our next step is just to add our base table piece in place so have a look at your little design and decide which looks better which side looks better to have your little bird and once you're happy with that all we need to do is sew that four millimeter seam allowance along here and then we're going to press that one that seam open and flat so everything is sitting nice and flat so now that we have our front completed now we can get started on adding our appliques so we're going to start these are put on on a in a certain order and they must be put on this way or you won't have the right kind of overlaps so first of all your saucer piece and it will have a little T at the top there to make sure you've got your your top correct now the measurement from the edge here is three centimeters from the very edge of that one now also when you're cutting out all of these little pattern pieces remember you're cutting them out on your heat and bond you need to place them reverse to what you actually want them to be because obviously when you flip them over they're going to be the other side so I've created this little quilt that the little bird and the handle sit on the right hand side so when you lay them out to cut them out you lay them out left so I hope that makes sense okay so we're going to that one is three centimeters from that side edge from the left edge and from the very base it is three and a half centimeters it sounds very exact but it makes it all fit nicely so three and a half centimeters from the base three centimeters from the left hand side so that's the first one that we press into place the next one is our teacup now our teacup is centered make sure that it is centered right in the middle there and that is going to sit just over one centimeter from the base make sure those measurements are right 
when you've got them in the right position, the next piece to go on is the little lip of our saucer. Make sure that's all lined up. You'll find they'll line up beautifully with the bottom. You'll see exactly where that sits and you can see that that will just cover the base of that little cup. So that's your, your, it's your third piece to press on once that one is in place. You're going to want to add your little T. So our T, remembering again, and I've already forgotten, you see some of these pieces look the same top and bottom, but they're actually not. So make sure you remember your, there we go. That's my top. So my little T piece is going to be pressed on next because we're going to overlap it. And it does just show a little bit of that rim. So you can check it first with your front main barrel of your cup. You want to make sure that this lower edge is covered and that these two edges here shouldn't meet. They should be just close, but they shouldn't meet. So the T gets pressed on first and then that final barrel piece gets pressed on after. So I hope you can follow all of that. It all makes sense once it all comes together. Now, I normally do my appliques in pieces um, and so little pieces at a time, but this one works better if we get that teacup all into place and then we can decide how we're going to do our stitching. So there is my little full teacup pressed on there and now we can start to think about how you want to be stitching around those pieces. Now, you can do this in so many different ways. First of all, I'll say if you have a, a darning foot and you can do some free motion machine embroidery, this project is perfect for that. Um, and you can make it all quite sketchy. I would go for a darker thread and just trace out all of your lines there. It gives you a totally different look. What I'm going for here is a cleaner sort of a finish. I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch around most of these pieces here. So what I want to do is I want to indicate that I have a gold rim around the top edge of that little cup that carries on around this front edge here. So that's the first one I'm going to stitch in place. I'm going to use a pearl thread. It's an eight ply, so it's fairly fine, but it's just a little bit heavier than my normal top stitching thread. So, and I'm going to be doing that in a gold. Now you certainly could use a metallic thread here if you like. I'm not a big fan of using metallic threads. I love how they look, but I don't like sewing with them. So I'm gonna stick with my old gold color and I'm going to be keeping my stitches nice and small. Now, alternatively, you could take this one to the machine and sew a very small but very close little zigzag stitch, almost a satin stitch around all of those pieces. Now, you want to mark out very clearly your shapes. The way to test that is to lay your thread around to check that you're using the right kind of thread color to make it stand out. I'm wanting it all, all to look quite real. So you can see that little gold is going to look like gilding around there. I'm then going to sew that same stitch in the same way around this edge of the saucer, which continues on around that top edge to give that impression again. And I will probably sew with this uh, same color around the outside and the inside of the handle again to denote that gilding. So with my other pieces, with my T, I'm just going to basically do the same color. I may do that on the machine with a little zigzag stitch. Um, I'll see how the rest looks first. And then I will be stitching around the lower edge of the cup. And I'm going to be doing that in a deeper pink so that it really shows up. And then I just need to stitch those two little edges there of that one. So you can go ahead and, and sew those on in any way that you prefer. Um, just be very mindful of making sure whatever colors you use, you want them to really um, stand out and really mark out that shape. 
So to start my blanket applique stitch with my purl thread, I've just come in from behind, I've got a knot in the end of my thread, I'm using a single strand, as I said it's eight ply, and I'm going to keep my stitches quite small, so I'm sewing a blanket applique stitch, and if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before, I'm going to put a link up the top there for you, that will show you how to do that up close, but basically I'm taking my, my needle through all of those layers, and coming out right on the edge, and bringing my needle through that loop each time. And remember it's an outlining effect that I'm wanting to give here, so I will not make those stitches too deep. Through the loop each time, and making sure that I'm coming out right on that edge, and also making sure that I'm rotating my work as I go, so that my stitches are all pulling out, are all coming out as they should. If we don't rotate our work as we go, they can have a lean on them. So you can see that's just going to give a nice clear line around the top of that little cup there. You can see even from that far away, you can see just how clear that will be. So I'll travel right the way around, continue on around the front of that cup and then do all of my other little shapes. So let's have a look at how we're going now with our stitching done. So I've used, as I said, a couple of different ways of stitching. So you can see that I've used my pearl thread to really outline those edges to show up what, I, what I'm indicating as gold, uh, gold gilding there. And then on the little T, I've wanted to keep that edge nice and flat. So I've done that one on the machine with a close little satin stitch. And I have gone ahead and really outlined with a deeper pink that handle. So that really shows up and the edge of the cup there, you can see. But on the very base too, I've gone ahead. I want to keep that one just for perspective point. I really want that bottom line to basically disappear. Um, I wouldn't outline it, it would make the whole thing look too flat. So we're trying to keep that 3D look. So that one I just did nice and flat with a coordinating thread also on the machine. You can see there I've added that little um, tag, the little tea bag tag, and just pop that on the opposite side of the bird because we want to have some balance happening with the picture. So, and I've just tilted that one out just a little bit and you can see I've machine stitched around that, added my little word and I've just created a little uh, string that hangs down and make sure it goes up and over. If you're not feeling confident with doing that, draw it in first. Um, just remember whatever colour you're going to use for your tea bag string, they are traditionally white, so I've only sewn it in white, but you can see it really marks it out anyway. So from there, now we've got that all nicely pressed, we're going to head go, go ahead and start on our little bird. Now we start with our, our first main body piece, bit hard to see there, she's a bit camouflaged there. But the positioning on this is really, really important because we're going to be adding, we're going to be stitching in those little legs and claws to hold on to that little teacup. So you'll notice on your pattern template that you've got two marks that show you where your little legs will pop out. I've just done a tiny mark there on the front. I'm going to be sewing over that. Tiny mark there on the front to show me where that goes so I can get my positioning right. First thing you need to realise is that the little beak sits almost parallel, straight across. It has a tiny tilt up, so just a tiny little tilt up. We want the belly to sit just above that edge, but not touching. And we want this, if you followed all of the measurements as you go through, the very tip of that wing is five centimetres from your very edge. So that may help you with that. Now, it's important to get these, uh, get it set in the right position because once we go to stitch those uh, little legs in, we ne need them to be on the right angle to keep that. We're really going for this lovely realistic little look. 
So I am going to remove my backing paper and press that first one on because then from there we're set. We can go ahead and add the other pieces. So that has my little bird pressed on. Now our next pieces to go on are our tail pieces. So now just remembering when you're cutting these out, these little tiny pieces must seem, uh, you know, can seem very daunting to some people. I do have a video that shows you um, about cutting out and layout and particularly how I do it to keep all those pieces nice and crisp. So I'm going to put the link up there for that video. You'd have a look at that. Now remember when you're cutting your pieces out, when you're tracing them out, they have to be reversed for for what you're going to be doing on your project. So if you're, we are having this little bird on the right hand side. So when you lay your pieces out on your, the back of your heat and bond fabric, you're going to lay them out to the left. So that when you take that paper off and turn it over, the little bird is sitting on the right, like I said with the teacup. So Next step, yes, is to add our little tail pieces. So we start with the first one. We're going to press that one into place. And then this little one sits in place. Exactly, you'll see it'll all line up straight over the top. So we get those two pressed on first. So that has our tail in place. Our next piece to go on is our little wing piece. You can see that will line up with the tip there and across the back there. That's why it's important to make sure your little shapes are cut out beautifully. So that one will go into place. We will press that one on. Then your next piece to go on is your full head piece. And that lines up and covers that little wing, top of the head, make sure it's all lined up. And you can see that that piece overlaps the wing, gives us that that sort of layering is very important to keep this sort of realistic look. So then we will press that one in place over the top of the wing. Okay, so those pieces on. So our next piece is our black top of the head piece. That one tucks in, you see again, it's gonna line up with the top of the head. And it just overlaps those other pieces and creates our little beak section in there. We will press that one into place. Right, okay, brought that a little closer for you to be able to see these next pieces. So now if you're having any uh, troubles with pressing on little pieces and them shifting and moving before you press them on, a little tip is to heat up the area first with your iron and then place your little piece in place and that it'll settle it there enough, the warmth will keep it there enough to not shift as you put your cloth over the top. So this is the crown of the head that goes on next. Again, that will line up with the top of the head. You'll see that curve. That one gets pressed into place. And then we have our little cheek section, the little bumps face upwards, and the little point is to the front there, which lines up with the little point. It's a bit hard to see on the black but it lines up there along the bottom there. The little eye will nestle in there. And then our final little piece just sits on the back. You see it lines up with the little back curve and just tucks in there. So have a good look at that. I'm not seeing from overhead, so I may not have that perfectly lined up, but I will before I press it on. So now I'll go ahead and press those into place too. There we go. And so that has our little bird all pressed into place. So now all we have to do is the same as we did with the little cup and decide where we want to machine stitch and where we want to hand stitch. And again, there's a few different ways to do it. So I'll tell you what I'm going to go ahead and do. So first of all, everything I'm going to do on the machine, I do first. So I'm going to be sewing a machine close zigzag, the same as I did here around that tail and marking out that tail. Now I'm going to be able to use some slightly different blues so that it really stands out. So this is where you start to bring this little bird to life. So you can change your colors and work that little zigzag stitch and it'll keep that tail nice and clean and flat. 
I'm going to do the same then with the little wing and I'll be marking that out in a darker warm brown with that close little zigzag stitch and then I'm going to sew in no we might just do that for now so let's just get that tail section sewn in and that little wing section sewn in and then I'll show you where I go from there right so there you can see my first little bit of stitching done now you can see that little machine zigzag I love it on this because it gives it almost a little feathery look and it's so neat and tidy and I've used a contrasting color so it's really brought that tail section to life and I've also just stitched a straight stitch right up the middle there using a contrasting thread also so now that little tail section is is complete and then I've just gone around that little wing section giving me the same sort of effect I like the little feathery sort of effect and with a zigzag and then I've gone ahead and just stitched in just from it that they don't have to be in any particular order but just to give an indication of the separation of that wing for some feathers and I've just gone back and forth and met them all at the point of that wing so my next step is I'm going to continue with the machine stitch the little close zigzag I'm going to bring it down even smaller and I'm going to be sewing in just a warm brown just from the edge here this full lower section here and I'll do that because I really want you to see it be quite lost that edge will be quite lost um, with those pale colors so that will really mark it out so that's my next step so let's have a look at how we're going so I have stitched that little baseline in with my slightly warmer thread and then I've continue, continued on and I've used a contrasting thread to match these colors up the front there and stopping at the base of the beak so I've done all of that on the machine so my next step is to go ahead and mark in and I've done just lightly with a little white gel pen there just from the tip of the beak into that little apex there just a straight line we're going to stitch that on the machine because it's the cleanest way to do it and I'm going to be using probably a very very light gray something very pale so that it shows up which is just our little beak line and then you can see that I've gone ahead and I've taken my ruler and from the base of that little curve there which is the start of little birds leg we just draw a straight line to the base of the cup there and then I've just done one two three little claws and from the mark that you had on your pattern template just straight out on a slight angle and one two three claws so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch over those little legs a few times a little bit thicker at the top here on both of them in a nice dark brown and that's going to be a nice clean now you can do these absolutely you can do these by hand I'll use a a back stitch a linked back stitch um, and they'll show up really well I'm going to do them on the machine because I like I like the neatness of it and the fineness of it so I'm going to go and do those and stitch in that one using that same little straight stitch so there I have all of my machine stitching done you can see those little legs stitching really well on the machine you see what I mean about them being nice and clean and tidy that little beak is now nicely divided so now I'm going to do my little bit of hand stitching so I'm going to blanket applique with a tiny stitch along this bottom edge here around each of those little very turquoise shapes and that will be our stitching done I can add a tiny little black nostril there just one stitch just to give it a little bit of detail and from there you could go ahead and add anything you could add little beads and and all sorts of little sweet embroidery um, just more stitching if you like I'm keeping it all very basic so you can just have the basics today but um, so I'm just going to keep that stitch nice and small um, and just using basically the same color it will stand out just a little and it will certainly stand out on that lower edge 
and that has my little bird all finished I have gone ahead and after stitching those areas given it a really good press I've added my tiny button for my eye I've got my tiny little nostril in there that just pulls that area in a little and make sure that if you're using a black eye which is best to, to for the little bird is to stitch it in with white so you get that little light reflect in the eye and now the only other thing I've done is I've gone ahead I said at the beginning I, I've left a space there um, I think this little quilt looks fabulous with a few little words so anything that you have or you may just want a little bit um, uh, another little bit of applique there that's entirely up to you maybe some buttons um, I've just got laugh out loud because we've got a little cup of joy there so but you could add anything that you like my advice is don't overpower this side this is the hero of the quilt so we make sure that this is secondary to anything else that's going on and keep it uh, don't match it match it keep it nice and random so this one a little bit smaller and up a little higher so our next step is to add our little border so that is as simple as taking our top and bottom strips to start with you've got your measurements there in your pattern templates you can always trim these to size if you don't find they're exactly right because your seam allowances could be slightly different to mine so I'm going back to about a five millimeter almost quarter inch seam allowance now and I'm going to stitch this one into place and then also of course with right sides together now if you are a quilter and you want to go ahead and add a a mitered edge binding go right ahead and do that this is just a really quick way to put a little wall hanging together for perhaps people who are not as experienced so we're going to stitch that one and that one and we're going to press those open once we've done that we're then going to add do exactly the same thing and add our little side panels and flip those out as well get it all nicely pressed with the seams open and flat okay so you can see there my little quilt is all framed up nicely my sides are on and I've gone ahead and pressed those seams open and flat on all sides and the first thing I've done then is gone ahead and cut my fleece my uh, piece of wadding fine wadding to be you can see it's just a little smaller maybe half an inch just about a centimeter and a half from the edge all the way around and I've pressed that on to the side our uh, constructed side and then I have laid this front onto my piece that I had ready with my interfacing put right sides together laid that on top pinned it on and cut an exact template for the back so now we just need to sew up a little quilt now if you're going to be hanging this little one you're going to want to add in between these two layers perhaps just a little two little ribbon loops so that you can thread them onto a quilt hanger or perhaps a, a piece of dowel um, and it can be a little loop of ribbon it can be a, a special little braid anything that you like I'm just making up a sample so I won't put anything in there so now I'm just going to go ahead and pin and clip all the way around make sure that you've got your you know where the top is and you're going to leave an opening at the bottom so the opening you need to have it quite wide probably around about 10 centimeters so that you can turn that one through easily um, and we're just going to stitch right the way around now you can do your standard quarter inch um, or five six millimeter seam allowance and uh, and we'll just get that one all ready to turn through and that has my quilt all stitched around I left the opening there that opening is actually about 15 16 centimeters so a little bit bigger so all I do before I turn it through is just take those corners off it will help to push those corners right out but I don't trim the seams because they're quite small and now it's just a matter of turning through pushing out all those seams well and then we'll give it a good press and there we have our little quilt all turned through and pressed out I can't emphasize enough the importance of pressing when you're making these little quilts press 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 all the way through you'll get a much better result in the end 
so now that that's all done I've turned those little edges under to close that opening and what I'm going to do is sew around right close to the edge a top stitch in a matching thread all the way around the outside and then you can go ahead and you can quilt it in any way you like so we can do any kind of stitching now you very clever quilters will do all sorts of things all over there probably what I will do is I will stitch in the ditch on that frame line to actually settle that quilt square into place and then I may do some stitch in the ditch along some of these panels here and I will stitch around those little boxes just to make them stand out just a little bit more but you can do whatever you like you could do the full Monty on there I can't wait to see what you're going to do with them so I'm going to do my final stitching and we'll see how that looks and there we go that brings us to the end of our beautiful little art quilt so I've just stitched around the board I usually just stitch it in stitch the frame in I stitched the baseline in and you can see I've just gone around those little words but you can do whatever you like you could actually go around the entire bird and so on I've used felt there so I feel like there's enough uh, volume in it already so I hope you've enjoyed that one that one would make a beautiful um, center of a quilt and it would also make a lovely cushion front so remember that for that if you do love making the little mini quilts have a look at my playlist and you'll see that I've got several others we've got the little camper quilt which is equally as lovely we've got a really lovely simple one with the little kitties all sorts of skill levels there we've got a little sewing machine quilt I've seen a lot of you have made this one this one comes up so well so have a look at my playlist there's a couple of oldies on there too just don't laugh at my hair <laughs> there's some little mini quilts there videos way way back so I hope you've really enjoyed it I particularly love this one little bird that I've always loved to uh, to see on my walks and to draw in my illustration so thank you for joining me well thank you all for watching today I hope you've enjoyed seeing this little one come together I can't wait to see what you're all going to do with this one all you very clever quilters out there too so make sure that you uh, follow me on Pinterest because I want to see all of the pictures and if you send them to me via Pinterest it's much easier for me to pin them I'm not going to miss anybody out um, have you had a look at our little board lately it's called you made it because you did and uh, some incredible work on there it's so exciting and encouraging to see all the little different ways that you tweak and and play with my patterns it's very inspiring to me um, go and have a look at it if you haven't seen it lately it's growing and growing and growing and I would love all of yours to add to it so really enjoying that thank you so much for sending them to me and for all of those of you follow me on Instagram thank you so much I love chatting to you I love hearing about just whatever absolutely whatever because it's very isolating at the moment so it's nice just to talk with like-minded people all of you lovely people so show me your other artwork show me I've had a couple of people show me their their other little talents and, and it's been really exciting for me so just be creative everybody so make sure that you subscribe new patterns coming up all the time or I wouldn't want you to miss them and uh, and make sure everybody that you all stay safe and let's keep it going let's keep that creative vibe happening for the start of the year let's really rev it up um, and I'll provide you with plenty to do so in the meantime everybody when something good comes to you in your day make sure that you pay it forward and until next time a from me